Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of At Home, where I get a chance to talk to folks from sort of everywhere in the country, in the world, um, who are all dealing with the challenges, you know, now that it is technically not 2020 anymore, um, sort of the post-2020 challenges, um, it was a tough year for everybody. And, you know, as much as it can be easy to look back and go, wow, that was a hard year, these bad things happened, I'm choosing to look at it from like a much more optimistic perspective because even though there were so many challenges last year, when I sat down with my wife and I, we looked through like what was hard, but what really good came out of it. There were so many more good things that came out of it quantity wise than there were negative. Yes, the things that were bad were really bad and they sucked and they were not fun. That said though, the positive stuff is so much better. Relationships became stronger, new friends developed, you know, close, much more closeness with our family. So I am really excited today to get to talk to someone else who has a very different perspective than mine, has lived through a lot of other things than I've lived through, and just hear her story and really talk to her. So Patty, it is super awesome to have you on the show today. Hi, Jeff. Thank you so much for asking me to be on. It's so a pleasure to be on, on board and share my story and... Excellent. and provide some information and provide some inspiration along the way for your audience. Awesome. Thank you. So, Patty, for everybody, Patty is a former podcasting personality entering into the world of live streaming. And from there, I'm going to give it to her because she can tell her story so much better than I ever could. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, as you just mentioned, at the time of this recording, we had just said bye-bye to 2020, and we're now entering to 2021. And everything is always um, a journey. And so it was very interesting as Jeff had asked me to come on board and share my story with regards to um, how we handle the pandemic. I kind of had a different perspective and I'm excited to kind of share uh, my journey and regards to how I was able to handle, um, I guess what you would say, a divine storm. <laughs> That's how I would say it. So um, as he mentioned before, yes, um, I was a former podcast personality. I still love podcasting. It's, it's definitely going to be my future. But again, everything is connecting the dots. And so um, with regards to my story and my journey, as you can kind of see, I kind of have a very mindful aura about me. <laughs> By the way, just to say, Teddy, I absolutely love your background. It's not just it's not just beautiful to look at because of colors and the way it's set up, but it's always every time you're on camera doing anything, it's always your said it's like you can't help but start to feel a little bit more serene whenever you come on camera. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. No, absolutely. And so um, prior to 2020, or actually, what got me to this point? Okay. Um, I started a podcast back in 2014 called The Brand You Economy with Patty E, and it's still around. <laughs> and so that podcast was basically, um, it was a, a storytelling, using the power of storytelling and speaking with um, influential people that changed their lifestyle from a lifestyle, excuse me, a lifetime employee into a lifestyle entrepreneur. And prior to that journey of starting that podcast, I was in direct sales and uh, there was always an entrepreneurial fire in me. And during that time, this was around 2008 journey. Um, there was a lot of people coming up that you are now aware of for those of you that follow online influencers, such as like Marie Forleo, Pat Flynn, uh, Lou Mangello, Daniel Laporte, Mastin Kip. I would always follow them. And I was just so fascinated how they had you know, how their journey was from what they used to do before and how they became and did something passionate, how they leveraged their life's purpose and branded themselves along the way. So I was fascinated by that. So I invested in myself into podcasting and launched a podcast. And I was basically in a situation where there's got to be more to life than paying bills. There's just no possible way that we're put on earth to kind of be programmed what society wants us to be programmed, get an education, get a job, do what everything else that you're supposed to do, get married, get the house, you know, pay taxes and die. I just thought to myself, like, there's gotta be more to that. <laughs> so, right? You want to right. To it's, well, you, it, right? You're, what you're describing is so, um, and I, I've said this before in other, episodes, other interviews I've done, but I, it, every time I hear someone say something like what you just described reminds me very much of, you know, how I remember my dad 
like viewing his job like what he did for his career he stayed like basically the same company for like 32 years it was very much like i go do my job i get my pension when i leave and i'm not demeaning that like if that's if that's what you want and that's the end great but it's it almost feels like a like unintentional fixed mindset when you think about it that and at least for me yeah Yeah. i know at least for me i look at that i'm like that does not sound appealing or exciting or like adventurous in any way Right, because that's what you call the evolution, right? The mm-hmm. journey, right? Which I like to say the, the journey of your dash I'm, I'm, from birth to death, right? Like, what is that dash, right? What are we going to make out of that dash while we're here? And so, um, you know, I started diving into um, having these conversations. And then I, you know, went on to the journey of the brand new economy. And what I realized that um, there was an outer world and an inner world. So to my outer world, to my audience, to everything else, it looked like I had everything all together, but my inner world was a hot mess. <laughs> and so I realized that there had to be a balance between your outer world and your inner world. And to make a long story short, um, I, I talk about you know the spiritual journey, how, we, how we're like spiritual beings having a, a human experience. And so along the way, um, I had an opportunity to uh, sell my home and move on to another opportunity to launch and be more independent and really make a living instead of, um, excuse me, create a life instead of making a living. And long story short, my, along the way my journey, I ended up having to be a caregiver to my both uh, aging parents. And so it wasn't something that was in the plans, but I now with, you know, with faith and everything, everything Everything is divine in divine order, and there's a reason why we experience, experience these what what I call divine storms or challenges that we get through life. It's because it's teaching us a lesson that we need to get to another level. And so um, my podcast pod faded because now my um, attention had to be towards taking care of my mother and my father. And uh huh, go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say no, no. I was gonna say that I. It is so interesting to hear you talk about, you know, almost either whether it's an unintentional pivot or some little, you know, and a speed bump sounds so negative, but like some sort of thing that just, you know, diverts your path. Yeah, Divine just it, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, I think of it almost like the rock, the 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 metaphor of the rock in the water, where it kind of creates a little divergence, and it's exactly. not bad; it just happens. But it's so interesting to me that the way you just described, you know, that podcast and that media thing, that piece of your life ending and a new thing starting, you didn't describe it as a negative, like your words and your body language showed this, you know, whether it's an overt positive or just, this is just a thing that happened and okay, we move on. I think that's one of, when I've talked to a lot of folks about people I've mentored or coached or just friends of mine, that's, I think the hardest part that a lot of people are trying to get kind of out of their own way or give themselves permission to see what things happened in the last year, two years, 10 years as, Mm -hmm just a divergence it's time to do something else and Mm -hmm. like no worries Mm -hmm. let that thing go it's time for that to end it ran it ran its course it doesn't have to be an arbitrary end that i set later on something that's naturally ended one thing and a new thing began and Mm -hmm. as as essential as it may sound it's really positive because when you look back and think about it you're like well that probably was the right time for that piece to stop happening exactly yes that's why i've learned to to let go i love it where i don't know if you've ever seen a bumper sticker where it says um just when you think you you planned your life, God's laughing at you. Like, <laughs> I haven't seen that. No. <laughs> okay, so just when you're standing up, you're like, God's like, yeah, yeah, right. Let me just give you this now. <laughs> yeah. And whatever you describe your God, like it doesn't have to be, you know, yeah. whatever denomination, whatever following of it. But yeah, we we think that life is a straight line, and it's really yeah, and this whole you know <laughs> scrambling of life, right? But yes. it all has a purpose, and it all connects the dots because what ended up happening was is that I already, prior to this pandemic, okay, I had already had the intention to want to become, um, have a lifestyle, a lifestyle entrepreneur. So, because I knew that the mindset was, oh, get a job and job is security, right? And I never felt that having a job was job security. Yes, okay, you have a paycheck that comes in. But for me, my concept was job, J-O-B, was basically just over broke, right? Because you have enough money that you're not poor, right? You can have what you have, 
but you'll never make enough money <laughs> to ever be richer than the CEO, right? Yeah. And then for me, like, this is just my mindset was a paycheck was an employer's bribe for you to forget about your dreams, right? So that just wasn't gelling with me <laughs> mm -hmm. because, you know, while you're making a living, people are forgetting to create a life. And I just had this inside me where there's got to be more than this. There's got to be more than this. And so along with my journey, as I started the podcast and I shifted, you know, that I ended up having to take care of my parents, uh, uh, you know, becoming the caregiver because I was the baby of the family. I was divorced. I chose not to have children. It was by choice. And so they think that, oh, because you're single, don't have kids. Oh, you have all the time in the world. And that's a misconception too, for those that are single or, or just choose to have a thing. They figure that you must have all the time in your world. And it's not true because we have other responsibilities and more responsibilities than yeah, there is such yeah, a, right? I, I encountered this, I encountered this a long time ago when I worked at the first company that I worked at. Um, I, I don't, I won't say their name, but like the first big company that I ever worked at, um, a pretty well-known brand, like a sports brand, so to speak in the United mm -hmm. States. When I worked at them, I remember so often, this had nothing to do with the crisis. Just, I remember to your point about someone who's single or someone who's married without kids, the viewpoint of people who had kids, um, I have a five-year-old. But the, mm -hmm. the viewpoint at that time, at least the place I places I worked, was like, oh, well, you know, you're always like sick or you're taking time off. Like you can't do anything because you got your kids or you're using your kids as an excuse. All of us are working our butts off. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. As if there's as mm -hmm. if somehow one priority was more important than a different someone else's priority. And I, I'm really glad that you said it the way you did, because mm -hmm. people who choose different lifestyles doesn't make one or the other lifestyle more or less important they're just different. right exactly and the the priorities and the things that are important to you that develop in your life are important to you and that's the only right. person they need to be important to they don't need to be important to me like and it doesn't right. matter what my perspective is that i'm not you so it, i can't judge your priorities and i should right. but i think too many people allow themselves to feel like well, they have kids, so clearly their stuff is more important than mine. It's like, they're busier. They're like, yeah, exactly. exactly. Or, yeah. And it's funny how you said that, oh, you're using your child, child as an excuse while we're uh, um, working our butts off. And it's always the opposite. We're like, oh, because you have kids, then it's like a pass. <laughs> and the one that's single, oh, you guys have more time to, to be the workaholic at work, you know, because you, you must not have a life. So be a workaholic at work, you know? So, uh, anyway, I remember that. I remember that. Look right? at me too. Like, well, you can just be on call. I was in it. Like you can just yeah. be on call Jeff because you don't have kids. Yeah, like what? Like, this doesn't mean I want to do I it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I have things I want exactly. to do. Exactly. And so as I was connecting the dots and became, you know, a caregiver for my mother, I was already pivoting from the, the podcast because I had just stepped out of the corporate world and I still had that corporate side of me. Remember I told you about the outer world and the, and the inner world, you know, I looked all corporate and polished, but that my inner world was a hot mess because I was going through a divorce and just a whole bunch of stuff that was going on. So what ended up happening was I was tapping into more like more of a spiritual, more like inner work, more like I wanted to talk about deeper topics versus just, okay, how do you come from, uh, you know, from an employee life, you change from being a lawyer. Now you're the Disney expert, or you used to be a Marine and now you're the um, entrepreneurial expert, you know, you're the speaker expert, all these different stories that from the guests that I had on my show. And so what ended up happening was um, I wanted to get into some more deeper conversations. And it was so beautiful because during that time or that what's called hiatus, so to speak, um, as I was taking care of my mom, and of course, I was very blessed that um, I was there for her. She was home and she transitioned. And that's my way of using my word transitioned. And it really had me tapping into what is this all about? What is life all about? And I used to remember my mom used to tell me, she said, when all is said and done, all that is left is exhaustion. And so she said, don't kill yourself, live it up, live it for all you have. And I had such a spiritual lesson in that and also with my parents. And, and I wasn't seeing my parents as my parents anymore. I was actually seeing them as spiritual teachers and letting me really have like more awakened eyes of what is this all about? And so while that was happening, um, you know, I was home. I was, thank God at the time, 
I was teaching international students English as a second language. So I was already working online from home and I really, and I had moved from my regular hometown, which is Orlando, Florida, back to my childhood hometown, which is West Palm. And so I, at that time, I still had my stuff in storage in Orlando because I had no intentions of planting my seeds and, and, and creating like a new network here in West Palm. Cause I'm like, no, I'm going back to Orlando. I'm going back to Orlando. Remember, just when you think you have plans, God's going, ha, 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 right? <laughs> so I was in this mindset of, I'm not going to plant anything just here. I'm just going to do what I got to do, and I'm going to head back to Orlando. And so I kind of isolated myself, and the only outlet that I had was my international students. So I got a chance to travel virtually to all parts of the world. I used to tell my dad, I'm like, okay, I'm going to Brazil. I'm going to Saudi. I'm going to Korea. I'm going to India. So that was my way of fulfilling my my travel bug because I used to be a flight attendant as well. So I miss traveling. So that was my way of psyching myself out of traveling, but without having to deal with the, the travel problems, you know, like packing and all that other stuff. So my outlet of my outer world were my international students. So I kind of was already living an isolated life. And sometimes with social media, when you're like looking through Facebook or Instagram, you know how we have that, you look at people and they look like they appear to have the ideal life. And you're like, you feel like you're missing out on life. And I was like, oh, I was like feeling so depressed. Like, where's my life? I want my life back, right? <laughs> and so all of a sudden when the pandemic hit, all of a sudden, you know, I was about to, to start and finally had my life just balanced and adjusted to the point where I'm like, okay, finally, I can now have a social life. I'm going to now be able to go out and meet and create my new social circle of, of friends. And then it was like, boom, COVID hits. And I'm like, really <laughs> I'm like really and so then all of a sudden when all, everyone started talking about you know the isolation I'm like welcome to my world because I've been doing it for the past six years so in a way I had already been adjusted so I didn't have that that major shell shock of people's lives being completely disrupted my disruption was not being able to get my life back going back out so that was the opposite. <laughs> it's, you know, I, there's a couple things you said and all that, that I, I, I really loved hearing. Um, one of them, cause I'm a huge geek of Carol Dweck's work on mindset and you, mm -hmm. what you just described about viewing, cause I've, I've actually heard you say this, um, like on work. So for the audience, Patty and I are part of a, a group of live streaming friends that met through some other programs we could talk about another time, but, um, we, we can, we were part of this community and you, I've, I've seen you write in this community or say that, um, like, oh, I, I had to travel or I did this travel. And I just assumed, oh, wow, she had to travel a lot. That's really cool. So for yeah. you to clarify that right now isn't just fun to hear, but it uh -huh. it tells me about your, whether you realized it or not, and you probably did, like your ability to transfer out of any sort of like fixed mindset that you had into this growth mindset of, I am this travel that I'm doing. I'm going to let myself view that connection with a, a foreign, somebody in, in a, another country as actual yeah. travel so your mind can be in it and allow yourself to enjoy what that is oh, yeah. Moment. it's oh, yeah. huge i don't think i don't think most people realize because i've heard people say oh dude that's just cheesy i'm not gonna like spiritually put myself it's like no that's not what we're asking you to do but the yeah. idea of like just allowing yourself to feel like i'm going to let myself be consumed by the moment that i'm in with this person and exactly. enjoy that it it can change everything about your demeanor not just in how you interact with that person, but when you walk away, how you feel when you like what you the feelings and emotions you can take away from that situation can like give you the permission to go be awesome the rest of the day because you feel like you're on right. a high. But if all if all you right. let yourself see is, well, I'm just here in my shed. Yeah, we're talking internationally, but I'm still just in my shed. Well, yeah, right. of course you are. But if that's all you let yourself see, of course right. you're gonna feel down about it. So ignore that. Let it go. Think right. about what's right in front of you, and it can make such a huge difference in how you're going to approach everything else that you do. And the fact that you had right. already started to do that, leading in to your point, allows you to go through something like the pandemic where you're like, well, I'm at home anyway. Like, well, okay, but that part of me doesn't really change because I'm already kind of doing that anyway. So, right. okay, I guess that's not that big of a deal. And here's the thing. Again, it all depends on your perspective. You always have the power of choice, mm -hmm. right? Just like you mentioned, you can either go to choose to look at it as, well, this sucks. Or you got to choose to look at it as like, oh, what is this here to teach me? Yes, exactly. And I've yep. always been, I've always now because of, of my personal journey of really diving inward, right? Because I was already diving inward and then, you know, COVID was the leveler. 
and allowed everybody to not only go in physically in their homes and be quarantined, but then now they have to really go internally and really start asking themselves the questions, what is this all about? What is really important in life? Yes. Yes, it is important that we need to make a living to have a roof over our heads and, you know, to have the things in, that we need, our basic essentials, but it's not everything. Like there's things far more valuable and more important than, than just the money part because right. everything, yeah. everything will work itself out no matter what in the best case scenario. So it's not like... Like you have to put yourself in a scenario like gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. What do you have, right? From those that are in the United States, we won the lottery, okay? We won the lottery to be born and be born in the United States versus those that were not born in the United States. Not that you didn't win the lotto, not, just being born is the winning the lotto. I'm just, I just want to clarify that it's not, oh, sucks to be you that you weren't born in the U.S. That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is to understand the, the opportunities, the things that we have that we take for granted that I've learned through my international students that I get to talk to and learn from other cultures and other perspectives that really put my perspective to say, you know what? It's not as bad as you think it is. And really truly appreciate what you do have, right? And so to me, I've always said it before, gratitude is the abracadabra of life. If yeah. you are able to harness and be able to look at certain things and find something good out of it, right, mm -hmm. then it's not so bad as you think it is. I totally right? agree. You said something um, a minute ago about having moved from Orlando back to West Palm for mm -hmm. things that you were priorities that changed in your life. And mm -hmm. you made a comment about... Um, kind of holding on to intentionally or otherwise holding on to the fact, yeah, but I'll, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back, right, which right. inadvertently forces you to never really accept. And as my wife would say, if you're walking down the street, just look up like what's around you. Like you don't right. ever just look up and see what's actually around you that you can enjoy and that you can let exactly. yourself be a part of. And I think right. that's a practical, um, practical version of the story. The more existential version of the story you were just describing, which is, allowing yourself to have some gratitude or have some, you know, excitement about the things that are around you right now. Forget about right. the stuff that's someplace else. Yeah. Maybe you right. can get back to that point. Okay. But it's like being on a vacation. I would love to go back down to Playa del Carmen. Like I love it down there, but I can. Mm -hmm. So why don't I just put that in a package and I'll, I'll think about that another time when I can do that. Why don't I enjoy what's sitting right in front of me right now? Mm -hmm. And when you actually let yourself do that, Here's a silly example. I, right before we started recording, I was I got a notification on my ring, my front yard, that something from Home Depot showed up, which is a new. F we have this little patio in our front yard that we had, so we could like sit up front and let our son run around and play in the front yard mm -hmm. and just sit there and mm -hmm. have some coffee. Like it just arrived. The patio set that we ordered just arrived. And I'm like, oh yeah, I get to sit out front. That's it. Like I'm just excited that I have a new table and an what? umbrella that showed up that I can sit in my front yard in the afternoon when my and son goes over could. to school. And that you could exactly. Right? Like I'm excited about can. sitting in a front yard. Not going on a trip, all these things, but, but it's a little thing that you realize, a if I can just have a little thing. bit of gratitude and excitement for something that actually will bring me some real inner joy, even if I don't have mm -hmm. to think about that in the moment, it it right. lets you really look forward to almost anything that's in front of you. It's so true. And the gift, the gift of those, you know, turns and changes and, you know, uh, challenges that come that come across was that it set me up to where I am now because it allowed me the opportunity to, um, to be where with my parents. And again, not realize I was being given such huge spiritual lessons that I wasn't aware of at the time. Um, I feel like even though it felt dark during those times, I finally learned the concept of like, oh, I was planted like a seed, right? When a seed is planted, it's in a dark soil, right? But yet you need to be in that dark soil and need to, to discover your inner power so that you can break and germinate and make your way up to the surface and really live your purpose. So during that time of what I would have considered my dark, darkest time was actually the most incredible time of growth because it brought me to 
full circle with regards to um, what I'm, what my new thing is, was the live streaming, right? So here I was, I was about to break free, COVID hits, there we go again. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, okay, I need to start up a new podcast. And I wanted to talk more spiritual things. But then something was just like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> and then I came across, um, uh, what do you call, as people were pivoting and doing everything online, because now that we had a captured audience, and while I was in direct sales, I was in charge of doing a lot of events. So then when I saw that people were doing virtual events, I attended a conference and I invested in myself because the best investment you could do for yourself while you have dumb time is learning and educating and investing in things to make you to bring you to the next level, right? Just like how we invest on a cell phone for the next level, the next level, you know, the 4.0, the 7.0, the 2.0 phone, iPhone, whatever, is the same thing we should be investing in ourselves to bring us to our next level of our age, right? Whatever your age is, your 3.2, your 3.5, your 4.0, I'm 5.0. So, <laughs> so those are the things how I kind of see things. And so when I started going into the virtual uh, arena and went into a conference because I wanted to see what it was, how it translated, which led me to the technical side of, uh, because I love production, and then led me to discovering live streaming pros, which led me to Lita, which led me to you, which led me to here. And so when I went into Lita, I was like, uh, well, I was not on the live streaming train and even though I've done public speaking and even though I've been able to do video recording, I just never had that, that red button and you're live. And I'm like, and, and speaking of stream of consciousness, cause I was so used to script and being polished and, you know, corporate everything. Right. Um, so, so that was one of the things that brought me to the, to the opportunity again, to invest in myself and challenge myself because while we had the downtime, I wanted to, to take advantage of it. I wanted to be grateful about it. Like what was the next thing that I needed to discover and, and how can I create, how can I, or how uh, Joe Dispenza, uh, he's a guy that I follow, but anyway, Becoming Supernatural is his book. And I love his, his expression was the best way to predict your future is to create it. And I'm such a creator and I'm thinking how with the circumstances that I have here, how I'm going to pivot, how am I going to be able to create this new reality that we're in? And so live streaming was in it. And then I got into live streaming and I wanted to test the concept, the Zenergy Zone. And so I wasn't quite sure and I wasn't really into the Facebook groups and, I'm, and I've been part of tons of Facebook groups, but I just wasn't, it just didn't do any, anything for me because it was just, you know, a photo and comments and interacting that way and whoever's the lead person doing a video in the group, but I just never felt the connection part and live streaming pros and live streaming friends was that it was a total different experience because when we went into Lita, which you've mentioned before in your previous episodes, live streaming every day in August or April, that's how we all connected. It challenged me and allowed me to, to connect even more, especially the perfect timing and the alignment of the pandemic, what everyone was going internally. I brought up the conversations. I brought up the questions. I brought up the emotions that just everybody just completely resonated. And I didn't expect it to be as overwhelming as it was during those 30 day challenges in August, but everybody connected with my message. And we, we really connected more emotionally because a lot of people don't want to talk about their emotions. So yeah, um, that's how we feel about this, right? Yeah, it's, I'm so glad that you brought that up because it's, I mean, I started, I did the first leader challenge, my, my first leader challenge back in April of this year. Um, and I had never heard of it. I've been, I had been following live streaming pros and Luria specifically for years and the various things that she mm -hmm. had done, but I hadn't come across this until, I don't know what happened, but somebody had posted about it. Anyway, I did it. And it was the same that you noticed that at first I'm like, I don't, I'll just do this because I'm going to record video. I don't know if I can do live. That's not my jam. Right. And then halfway through started to realize that I wasn't trying so hard. Like you, you just mm -hmm. don't find yourself trying so hard when you're doing the live stream. Mm -hmm. you still want to be polished and you still want to be yourself, but you find yourself, right. at least I did, not trying to be something that I'm not. Whereas oftentimes outside of this particular video show that I've been doing, um, 
most of the video recordings I've done in the past, I always end up doing like like 50 takes on my own because I don't use a script because when I tried writing a script, I'm not good at writing it, so I don't follow it well. Mm -hmm. But then otherwise, mm -hmm. I get way too much in my head and it's like, oh, I'm not saying this right. But when you do the live stream, you just realize that because you've noticed this when you watch other people is when you do it, people connect with you more when you make a mistake or let yourself just right. be yourself. Because you connection. yeah, right. when you're watching somebody else, you realize, oh, that person made a mistake. Oh God, I'd be, I'd be so embarrassed. And look, they're still going. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can see myself in that person, no matter who right. the person is or their subject. And it immediately starts letting guard your guard down. And you start relaxing a little bit more. And then when you do it, you're like, oh, I can just talk. Well, that's kind right. of fun. Right. And it was because of you, because you were interviewed, right? And I mentioned oh. it to you when I got into the group. Like, <laughs> I remember remember that. The I like, oh, you know? So, yeah. again, you just never know who you're touching, who you're influencing. Mm -hmm. And... The, the, the concepts that I that I wanted to to do is because and I'm, I'm going to tie this into your world. All right. Was regardless, we're all going on a spiritual journey. And so a lot of people don't realize it <laughs> until and I mentioned before, um, it's either you're going to have a divorce, a death in a family, an illness, a tragedy, or a pandemic, right? Or a pandemic. And so, <laughs> or a pandemic. That was a, that was one that was added on to the to the to the list, right? And until something, we all are going to experience this in our lifetime. And when that happens, that is the trajectory and the pivot point that's gonna make you want to start asking questions and start unlearning everything that you were taught and relearn and start asking questions and really discovering the whole personal meaning of life. And so it's based off of the spiritual journey of Joseph Campbell. And I wanted to ask you, you've heard of Joseph Campbell before? Uh, the name sounds really familiar, but I'm not sure why. All right, All right. now I'm going to tell you why, okay? <laughs> so Joseph Campbell kind of got his re recognition through George Lucas. And now you're speaking my language. <laughs> okay. Okay. So George Lucas, that was the inspiration of the Star Wars saga because the Star Wars saga is about the spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. It's about the hero's journey. Yes, it and very so much is. we all are going through the hero's journey, right? The dark night of the soul, right? So you see those segments in the in the movie, and it's a very spiritual movie, right? Mm -hmm. Along with Wizard of Oz, right? There's a lot of things I'm like, oh, it looks all, but they're deep, right? So those are the things that those are the questions of why that I influence with Zenergy Zone, right? So that's my whole, um, uh, I guess, aspirations for 2021 is to create a live streaming show called Zenergy Zone because I want to create that sacred cyberspace, mm -hmm. right? And I'm more of the soul seekers guide to helping people live a more purposeful life, right? And so with Patty E from Brand New Economy, I was entertaining, educating, and empowering. But this time, Patty E is more about enlightening, energizing, and elevating because energy is everything. So that's how it came in full circle with regards to, you know, answering the call, right? I was, there was something in me that was answering the call. And that how everything just connected the dot between, you know, the divorce I went through, the loss of a job, you know, having to take care of my parents, going through the spiritual deep awakening and being planted so that I can grow and really balance, you know, now my outer world matches my inner world. And now I'm actually to the point where mm -hmm. I'm being the light worker. Now my word of the year is impact. I want to create impact in the world, right? Which is filled with love, abundance, and creating magic. So that is where the whole full story comes in full circle, where whatever you're going through of the pandemic and whatever challenges you're going through, it's only taking you to the next level. And they're called divine storms. And the reason why I call them divine storms is because just like everything, like what's on the other side of a, of a storm? The rainbow. Yeah. Clear right? skies. Yeah. Right. The clear skies. And we all have to go through it. Sometimes we can't go around the storm. We have to go through it. But despite how ooh, gloom it is and hail and everything, there's got to be a beautiful light at the other side. 
And sometimes I've, we just have to continue. It's, it's all cyclical, cyclical, right? right completely Ebbing agree. and flowing cycles, everything, the, the cycle of, you know, fall, spring, summer, you know, winter, right? Which is, and day and night, everything is cycle. So when you really grab that concept of what you're experiencing is all in cycles and that's how you have the spiral. Life isn't a straight line. It's about you come around in circle and it's the spiral circle of, of like evolving in yourself, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. the person who you were when you were 15 is not the person who you were at 25. It's not the person, it's not the person you were yesterday, but you need those different challenges or divine storms in your life that just makes it all to understand there's just more mm. than just paying bills, having a career, having a title. They set the, and those, a those, those milestones set the tone for what's going to happen for you next. You have to go through right. them, And you have yes, to go through exactly. the challenges and tribulations that come with that age and with, with the knowledge or lack of certain knowledge that you have at that point in your life. Right. And that's okay. Like trying to be, you know, this is facetious, but trying to be behave like a 30 year old when you're 20. It's like, no, you, you shouldn't want that. You should never no, desire for that because no. you need to go through the things that you go through and learn and experience as that age to be ready right. for the next stage. Because when you get to the next right. point, it's the journey to get there is what's more important than the fact that you actually arrive there. And I definitely heard and, some Simon Sinek optimism in there where you're like, optimism is not just blind to everything. Everything's right, unicorns no, and rainbows. No, no, no it's, exactly, I know no. that there's a lot of crap. There's a storm in front of me. I can see that there's a clear sky on the other side, and that's what I'm going to focus on. But I know that I'm going to have right. to go through all this to get to that point. I'm just, right. I'm not going to lose sight of the fact that there is a rainbow and clear skies when I get past this right. point. Right, right. But also, too, where, and I've, I've, I loved having, one of the blessings I've had during this pandemic while I was teaching my international students I really got a chance to see everyone's different perspective globally as they're experiencing this without the media being involved. So I actually connected with, you know, the people from Turkey, Korea, China, Saudi, you know, Brazil. Like, so it was really like, how's it going in your world? How's it going over there? Hey, how, you know, so it's a really kind of cool of a human connection, right? Because even though we're on the same planet, we're not all experiencing the same experience. We're like little, little multi-universes within this universe and this ecosphere. So um, what was pretty interesting was, is that what I learned as a first generation Colombian American, because my parents are both from Colombia and I was born in Brooklyn, New York and raised in, in the United States, um, a cultural conditioning, right? And so depending on what culture you were born in, you have that cultural conditioning that you've been brought up with. And sometimes again, until you have so, like life smack you, that's when you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Uh, you start re-questioning everything. You start unlearning everything that was taught to you and go, wait a minute. Uh, and you start, again, asking those questions and relearning everything to really bring yourself to your personal highest potential and your purpose in life. So that was really huge um, of what I had learned along the way, um, that I had to unlearn a lot of things, a lot of, again, just metaphor of a cell phone, right? Certain, certain apps that were hot back in 2000 are not as great and they need to be uninstalled, right? To what's more modern and of what's happening now. And sometimes we have certain conditioning in us that just does, no longer serves us. And we have to know how to say, you know what? This mindset, this concept no longer works for me. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of the things that came out of the pandemics and I, and I have seen it through people that are in relationships where, you know, some, the pandemic brought people closer together and to others, not that there's anything wrong because of my personal experience, even before the pandemic of um, understanding, like when I had my divorce, there was a lot of things that I had to learn within myself that I didn't realize that it wasn't all about me. And that I realized that I had a purpose and a path and my, my ex-husband had a purpose in the past and that it was okay that it, again, served its purpose while we were together, but we have something bigger and greater that had to go the opposite way. And then there's nothing wrong with that. And so there's sometimes there are people in relationships in the pandemic that there was a lot of divorces, a lot of, you know, separation, but it wasn't anything bad or tragic, but it was more of really putting things into perspective of what really truly is important and how we're no longer having to 
you know, uphold a concept that just just isn't healthy for you, right? Yeah, I think so that's a really. Have, right? I think it's a really important message to sort of like as we as we wind down this episode. I think it's a really important message to leave people with because it's not a negative one by any means. No, it's it not. is very much a message of some relationships, relationships with people, with activities, parts of your life going through something like a pandemic are it that is going to shine a light on the ones that you probably should be looking at saying, you know what, maybe those it's time for those to actually end. They did run its their course. Either they're mm-hmm. just ending now or they actually should have ended like some period of time before, but I'm just now right. getting a spotlight shown on them. But the recognition that also that other relationships are actually forming and building and creating. So one thing moves on and another thing begins. It's not right. it is never just it's all over. Okay, now what do I do? That's not that's no, not how it works. No, it's, but it's, being willing no. to let yourself see that other things are beginning and starting, that is very positive. And then you can start to become a little bit more okay with, like you said, mm-hmm. going through divorce isn't fun. I've been through one myself. They're not fun to mm-hmm. go through. But yeah. if you can let yourself see that sometimes these things do just need to end because it lets you have something new. I wouldn't have met my wife if that had, my current wife, if right. that hadn't happened. And I'm far happier than I've ever been in my entire life. That would never exactly. have occurred had that other relationship not just, you know what, it's time for this to end. Let's move on to something different. And that's okay. It's part of the journey. Yeah, it's part of the journey of the dash. And that's Absolutely. all it is. So and so if there's any one big takeaway is that whatever anyone is, whether pandemic, not pandemic, whether married, not married, whether with children, not children, whatever the situation is, is that the number one question that you always should ask yourself, and it was based off of what I've learned from Oprah Winfrey, is that when you have challenges, just ask yourself, what is this here to teach me? What is this here to teach me? Yeah. And so allow yourself that journey, not be attached to, to, to certain things because attachment is what causes the suffering. And if you just surrender and allow yourself to just be open and understand that, you know, it's a journey and, you know, yeah. you're a spiritual being having a human experience mm-hmm. and knowing how you grow to the fullest potential, just like a rose, you know, it's not thinking <laughs> it, it has that, but right. It knows it's a rose and it, it, fulfills its full potential right See, you're, you're making well. comments about attachment and attachment leads to bad things like i feel like you're a much more inner star wars geek than you think you you might think you are <laughs> see you've got some attachment no. leads to suffering see no, no, that's another show though. that's for another show, show. <laughs> yeah. so that's so basically i hope that full circle it totally of that does. journey how it all put together of well i was already thinking about moving on like you can't have job and security right and that when challenges comes it's because you're, it's to push you to another level and to open yourself up to allow yourself to meet your fullest potential. So, yeah, absolutely. Story Patty, thank you so much for being on the show. No, I really appreciate you. it. This has been a fantastic episode. And it's just, it's so, it's so interesting to hear your perspectives on how these things affect you. Because like you said, you had a different experience than a lot of people do. And yeah. that's exactly what I think the audi- this audience and myself even how it can be so helpful to hear that all that different perspective because it really helps you put your own life in perspective of like well i am just one person going through something that other people haven't gone through how can i take some of these lessons and do something different for myself which is right. just awesome so thank you i appreciate it is there anything you want to leave the audience with where, where can they find you places they can connect you can with you find me. you can find me at patty elize dot com, and i'm that's the same handle and all my socials and facebook uh Instagram. I don't do Twitter, but, <laughs> but uh, you shall see me and stay tuned and you'll see the energy zone. So I invite you to come to the energy zone where you can enlighten your mind, energize your heart and elevate your soul so you can live a more purposeful life. That's awesome. But, Thank you so much, Patty. I really appreciate it. Thanks for being on the show. My pleasure. Thank you for the honor. And everybody, thank you again so much for tuning in to another episode of At Home. This has been a blast. I'm having Patty on is fantastic and all the guests that I get a chance to meet with provide a little different perspective on what everyone's going through, not just post pandemic, but I really want to start focusing on 2021 and, and the future. What What is this new world going to look like and how can we ourselves have an impact on it overall and let it have an impact on us to do something more important for our own lives and feel positive going forward. So if you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button below wherever it is here on the screen and hit that little bell notification so you can get notified when new episodes come out. I'd really appreciate it. And if you like the episode, thumbs up. If you don't, you can hit the thumbs down, but you should hit thumbs up. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you soon. Bye.